This is rock and roll. I wake up every morning in a bed that's too small, drive my daughter to a school that's too expensive, and then I go to work to a job for which I get paid too little. Oh, this is gonna be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. You're waking up with the morning app on 90.5 WASU. Good morning. Happy Friday. It is a very peachy Friday here on the morning app. We are all excited. We're energetic. We're positive. No, oh, we're not. I like we're it. <laughs> I know you're lying, though, because you guys got no sleep. <laughs> yeah, we well, are on probably. I'm on four hours. No, no, about five. About I'm five on five. Hours. That's not bad. Dude, I think I'm on six. What time did we get back? One o'clock? I, we got oh. out of the movie at 1225. Dude, yeah, so I must have okay. went to bed around 1 and woke up around 7. That's six hours. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, That's actually. like prime time amount of sleeping right there. <laughs> it's really not, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I got to bed around like 1, 1.30 because I had to study for a test. No, actually 2. I lied. 2 o'clock. <laughs> study for a test. 2 o'clock. Okay, so you were, you're you on like 5 hours. Yes. You woke up at 7. Yes. Guess okay. how many hours I got? 9. Yeah, probably something like that. <laughs> I mean, I could sleep for 10 if... if uh, I didn't have to wake up. Oh, my goodness. So if you guys are wondering what movie me, Dovey, and Josh went to see last night, Marvel's Avengers Infinity War came out last night. Um, I've heard a lot of stuff about it during the week. We know it's a big week in Marvel's history. This is their 10-year anniversary because 10 years ago, the first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Iron Man, came out. So this is a really historic time for Marvel. And uh, Infinity War was... We're not going to spoil it, first of all. So there's going to be no spoilers. Yeah, good but, luck with that, talking yeah. about this. <laughs> oh, no, we, we did it for Black Panther. We're going to do it okay. again for okay. Infinity War. Okay. Um, the movie was just insane, to put it into short terms, because so much happened inside of the movie that you were not expecting. And um, it's about two and a half hours long. Um, it, has a, it has almost all of the superhero characters that we have come to know and love well, from Marvel in the last 10 all years. all of them. That's why I said but almost. 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 So there's some that are not in it. Again, no spoilers. But um, the movie itself was just incredible. And I was glued to my seat the entire time. Well, everyone was. Mm. Uh, the, the theater was uh, pretty energetic, too. It was kind of exciting. It, it was packed. Yeah. It was absolutely full. Like, yes. Uh, Josh and I sat like... At the on very the two very, seats on the right side that no one ever sat. I've in. never yeah. sat at that seat in the theater, but and it, and I honestly didn't mind because it was it was so good. But yeah, yeah it, nice. so if you are going to go see it, you know, try to get those seats as soon as you can. Right. And yeah. Like you guys said, it was jam packed to the brim, and even during the trailers, people were screaming and interacting and stuff. Oh, it was, that's weird. It was no, like one of those movies, like everything that happened, people are cheering or that's, whatever. That's a good thing. Like you want to go to a movie and like be in it with the crowd. You don't want to like, mm. sit there in silence and like sulk in your own emotions. You want to feel what other people are feeling and like know that you're not alone. So. It's not sulking to me when I go to a movie though. And like, okay, so you know when Harry Potter's first came out, everyone would dress as the character. Every, they would pregame for a movie and then they would like bring signs. I, I don't know. To me, it's like I want to sit here and experience this without anybody screaming, yelling, clapping. I don't want any of that. And I'm not like sulking in my own emotions. It's that I want to fully experience what the director has in store for me and i don't want anybody yelling crunching sipping screaming clapping around me <laughs> but that was the whole movie like at oh, certain gosh. points it was like people were cheering about oh, no, certain good. things they were sad about certain things and it's just wild yeah. I, it was good but i think sometimes they did overdo it a yeah. little bit because i was like i need to enjoy the movie i gotta hear you'd miss some there. lines and stuff yeah exactly oh, no yeah. see no 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 but that's every movie ever yeah it's a, it's gonna be like every Marvel movie premiere. I, I feel like if you yeah. so if you don't want to experience that, then just definitely wait until like Sunday. Yeah. And sit down. But th I, I have a feeling that for a while people will be um, coming back to see it at least yeah. the second or third time. I definitely need to see it at least the second time. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. Because there is a lot that happens in this movie, and of course we can't spoil it. But it's it's like one of those things where like when you're done, your brain's just like, oh my gosh, it's kind of like. You just need to take a break, have a cup of tea, come back and watch it again. Then, because I, I still don't really have a final decision 
about how I feel about the movie, but I think it was great. Yeah, it comes down to great directing, great cast, and they absolutely killed it. Actually, Avengers Infinity War has a 85% on Rotten Tomatoes, which means it's certified fresh. And so Chris is like, what, 85%? Well, That's when it not first, that much. When it first came out, it was 90%. So some critics, some people have their own views of why it went down. And I kind of agree with them, but at the same time, I think it was a personal favorite of mine. All I'm going to say is Greatest Showman had a 98 on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, it was a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, So I'm just surprised that this has a lower score than a musical. I just think they did a really nice job of blending all the superheroes together because we were worried about that with so many of them. How are they all going to have their own separate story? But you could see, like, they paired them off in groups, and they, were, they still all connected in some way, and yet it was still yeah. a good thing. Like, I guess, I don't know if this is a spoiler. Everybody knew yeah. that the Guardians were going to be in it, right? Yeah, yeah. So the everybody knew that, yes. Oh, spoiler, um, Dovey. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. come on. And, you know, so that's one thing I was wondering. It's like, how are, how are these directors going to um, keep the vibe of all the other heroes from their other movies, right? Because they, they did, like, Civil War and uh, The Winter Soldier. Yes. Which are a little bit, like, darker toned. And great and, movies. So I was like, how are the Guardians going to come in, like, in their creative direction and it, yeah. it and it worked like they were able to like when when the guardians show up they kind of cued the music and like you felt like oh wow this this is that crew like right. it, it feels like i'm in their movie for a little bit yeah because you know? that, that was i think that was probably the one gripe is that there were so many characters to focus on so sometimes it got a little well huh you know, so, that, so. That, that's the gripe, but that's what it was supposed to be. Yeah. So we can't be upset about it because yeah. we needed all these heroes in the movie because mm -hmm. otherwise it wouldn't be Avengers. Yeah. Was uh was there multiple directors like each yes. fr from e Oh wow. There's two. That's tough There's to work two. through. There, there were two brothers. Directors. Yes, they were the yeah. Russo brothers. Oh yeah, so. they do a great okay. job. But they're okay. really good at what they do. Yeah. But it wasn't like oh the director of Thor plus the director of Guardians. Plus yeah. The oh, that'd be okay. disaster. Right. They It'd each be... had to direct their own <laughs> character. Yeah, that would that would become a mess. It seems like they kind of split the scenes that they did so they had you know one set of people and then another set of people they were kind of focusing on and working on um but i think the two directors you know kind of made it come together and so a lot of people are going to be um talking about avengers for the time being and so coming up in marvel they have a couple movies coming out um for marvel if you don't know they have the cinematic universe and also just normal marvel movie standalone titles like deadpool um deadpool's gonna be coming out this year as well as venom Venom's coming out mm. in October, and then next year, Captain Marvel, and then part four of the Avengers. So there will be the next episode, which what? might be a sequel. So, yeah, next year is going to be another Avengers movie. And see, and that's what everyone needs to recognize going into this movie. Like, everyone said you'd go in, you'd be, you know, bawling, you're, you're going to be sad. I didn't come out as emotional as some people because I'm thinking to myself, we still have a part four. I know, right. <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I know what Marvel is doing down the line yeah. because I've looked into it, so characters that go or don't go i'm like yeah. i know who's coming back no matter what right and right. in you know part four in some way because they have to have a movie later on so that's probably why i wasn't too upset so when you go to this movie yes it's a great movie you know feeling all the emotions but no they still have a part four to or a part two yeah. to this movie I'm coming out next summer it's just like captain marvel and then we're going straight it back into right i mean that's not a long time do you know what what month it's going to come out yet? or They are saying in between February and May, so okay. sometime around this time next year. Now, if I read things correctly, immediately after Avengers uh, Part 2 of Infinity War, which we don't know the title yet, um, Spider-Man, uh, yes. Spider-Man number two is going to kick off like the new phase of Marvel directly after the Infinity War. Like He's going to yes. wrap it all okay. up and... like. Get, move into the next the phase. Next yes. gen. And then we also have Ant-Man coming out in the summer, which is going to be mm. the movie before the end of Phase 3, because the, the next Avengers is going to end Phase 3. That's right. But uh, Ant-Man's coming out in June or July, I believe. And so that's going to be the second to last movie in the phase. So there's a lot of stuff to question and think about. And then also, for people going to this movie, there is one end credit scene. Yes. One. So stick around one. throughout the entire thing. There is one end credit scene because yes. we were all a little nervous it wasn't going to show up. Yeah, mm. I was. I was a little concerned. I was like, uh oh, because they kind of skipped through. I some was kind of <laughs> like, dude, that's dope. If they don't give us one Honestly, and they I'm... just like leave it on the note they left. I mean, I think the best part about the movie too is that you really don't know what they're going to do from here. Like right. before, like I don't know if you watch like The Force Awakens or any other movie or like yeah. coming up with fan theories and all this stuff. The nerd stuff. movies, as but, they like, say. But like, dude, I'm just like, I was sitting at that theater like, 
where where what's next you know, how, <laughs> how can they how, how can they keep going from here i can keep telling the story marvel had us wanting more and yeah. i want more i want every marvel movie so, ever in my life i'm excited <laughs> well i'm surprised i was able to list two marvel characters there yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> what else you might be surprised about are perks of being a part of the royal family next on the morning app Where the scissors at? Where the tape? I don't know. You had it. No, I didn't. Guys, what are you doing? You said sports rap. We're wrapping up presents for sports teams, right? No, I meant sports rap, the sports talk show on 90.5 WASU that airs every Tuesday and Thursday at 6, where we recap the biggest sports games and news from the week. What did you say? <laughs> well, what are you rapping? Oh, I'm just getting Tom Brady to play football. And you can catch this. I'm just wrapping up LeBron's career in Cleveland and sending Isaiah Thomas a no trade clause. And I'm getting a choking hazard label for the Indians, Dodgers, and the Falcons. You think Dan Quinn will like this? Come on, guys, time for actual sports rap. Falcons, Dodgers. My name is Maggie Harper, and I host the App 1800, a podcast featuring the current events and gloom that you care about. Listen every Monday at 9 a.m. on 90.5 WASU, after the morning app. What time is it? I need to get up. I'm gonna go for the show. Oh, it's time for the morning app. Oh. <laughs> Worldwide at WASURadio.com, live on App TV, or with the iHeartRadio app. Hey, Howie. Oh, hey, Kristen, how are you? So, what's going on? What music you listen to right now? <sighs> Man, Howie, I don't know. I can't find any good music anymore. Well, guess what? I host a show on WASU. You do? Yeah, it's called The Rollout. Do you like Top 40 music? Of course I do. Well, guess what? I have your fix. I have the songs that are be coming up on the charts. I have the next breakout artist in the songs you want to hear again and again. That sounds great. When was it again? It's going to be Wednesdays at 7 on 90.5 WASU or WASURadio.com. The Rollout. Listen to The Rollout every Wednesday at 7 on 90.5 WASU. What's up, guys? Here on App TV, the A-Game is the only place where you can see highlights and updates on everything App State sports. I'm Braxton Critcher. And I'm Ashley Smith, co-host of the A-Game, where each and every Monday at 9 p.m., you can find the best coverage of all your favorite Mountaineer teams and in-depth reporting from the sidelines. That also includes athlete interviews, a player of the week, and a chance for students to get involved with the Q&A game. So join us each Monday on App TV for App State's only sports TV show.
And now back to your favorite morning talk show, The Morning App on 90.5 WASU. 90.5 WASU. That was Trouble by Ray LaMontan. LaMontan? LaMontan. LaMontan. Okay, <laughs> that was your pick, right? That was your song? That was. That, that was. was. I'm, I'm really loving him right now at the moment. What is, like, his... Style? Style. It's like a folky singer-songwriter, which is pretty much right up my alley. Okay. So. Are All we right. surprised? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's another song you got other than Trouble? Um, ugh, I can't think of the names right now, but... He does a cover of Jolene that I really like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to check him out is what, what I'm hearing right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I highly Friday. suggest him. I think he's uh, getting pretty popular. I've seen him kind of uh, get stronger on the charts over these past few months. Stronger? He's getting big. Yeah. He's the Hulk. Yeah. Mar Marvel well, Avengers. <laughs> well, maybe not the Hulk yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, one group that is extremely strong and powerful is the royal family. And I was reading an article about some of the weird like perks you get being a part of it and it's weird like you know obviously you're rich you know obviously you can probably do mostly anything but did you know that prince charles actually gets his shoelaces ironed come on what? no uh -huh. Wait. why he has three <laughs> personal valets all dedicated to maintaining his wardrobe and picking out what he'll wear and one of no. them one of the responsibilities is ironing his shoelaces if i ever meet him i'm gonna be like dude your shoelaces are whack. I'm going to be like, they, well they need ironed. to be ironed. And then he's going to be like, oh my God. Those things have, you're going to get, get his like valet in trouble though, Dovey. Yeah. Off with his head maybe, or something. Maybe just compliment them. Be like, those are well ironed shoelaces, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody picks out what he wears? Mm -hmm. Oh, that kind of, his wardrobe. That kind of stinks. Yeah. If I, Cause if I had, it. if I had a ton of money, to buy whatever kind of clothes I want, I would want to also wear whatever I want, you know? Yeah, I mean, but he has that, that option. You know, he has that freedom to do that. Because somebody could just pick his stuff out for you. Like, hey, man, you want to go casual today? Just put on t shirts some jeans. Boom. You want to dress up? Suit. Boom. Actually, that would be nice. Less decisions. Yes, yeah, exactly. Sure. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe there's perks. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think the shoelaces are weird, Queen Elizabeth herself can ban humor. Ban humor. Once Queen Elizabeth II dies, the people of Britain are banned from being funny on public television um, for, I believe, 12 days uh, between her death and funeral. BBC isn't really? allowed to air anything humorous for 12 days between her death and funeral. Is that like a mourning period then? Basically, in the event of the Queen's passing, BBC will immediately stop what they're doing, make the announcement of her death, and start airing the documentaries about the Queen's life that has been pre-recorded. They even have like black, black suits and ties ready to go to change into immediately. Makes sense. I mean, like... <laughs> That's their queen, you know? Like, yeah. that's a big deal over there for them. So, I mean, we, you know, when tragic stuff happens in our country, we don't air humorous things for a while, and it, it takes us a second to mourn and then come back to the humor. So and that makes sense. That's not uncommon either. I think it, there's a couple countries that do that with their kings and queens. So, like Thailand, for example, their their king passed away last year, and they, they had that same period, like mourning period for him. Do you think that's, like, by her request, or that's just a so. rule? No, I think it's per her request. Interesting. And then if you thought the shoelaces was weird, the queen has someone to break in her new shoes for her <laughs> so she doesn't have to walk around with uh, stiff shoes. Goals. <laughs> that would be so nice. As a female, I feel for her. <laughs> yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> she also has to wake up every morning between 7 and 9 a.m. to Scottish bagpipes. They play under her window no from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's extra. That doesn't what really it? sound like a perk. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say she enjoys it. enjoys it. <laughs> and then, uh, along with that, no cornered sandwiches. They cannot eat no any sandwiches with corners. Have to be circular or something without, like, you know, what? jagged corners. Why like a that? sub sandwich? Is yeah, that would work. Huh. Wait, why? why is, is it because, like, oh, my gosh, I was it's, about to say the I dumbest thing. I hate the squares, thing. man. <laughs> I was literally about to say, is it because of the round table? It, <laughs> <laughs> it's rumored that the sandwich rule started because Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert, thought it was unlucky to eat anything in the shape of a coffin. Hmm. Huh. Okay. That's the rumor. Okay, Don't know the, for sure. you might die one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's weird, though, is that now everybody in the royal family can't eat square sandwiches. Like, you know, oh, they can't have birthday cake? That's square? I mean, that's a lot of no, the birthday sandwich birthday that's gone, though. Some are circular. Oh. It's just a waste. <laughs> She also, a couple more, has ownership of all the fish within a three-mile radius of the Britain's <laughs> shores. So she owns all the dolphins, whales, porpoises, and swans. I like 
this one a lot. <laughs> I think it's just animals with you. That's why. Can't you just be like, like, how great would it be like to be like, yeah, that fish, any fish around me for this many, you know, miles, it's mine. It's my fish. That's, my fish, <laughs> That's such a I nice, you. like, <laughs> all, is it all the animals too? No, it's just <sighs> those fish within a three mile radius. It, the law also oh. says she can eat them if she wants, but she hasn't. Like, because she owns them, it's like, she can do what she wants with them. That's I awesome. love that rule. I want that perk. But wait, Kristen, you don't like water. It doesn't matter. They come to her. Yeah, yeah, I would be like Snow White. I just whistle and all the fish would jump out and come to me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dream come true. All right, and the last one, possibly the best one, Prince Charles has a personal toothbrush squeezer. <laughs> That's... <laughs> how do you apply for that position? I wonder like, how much you get What paid. experience do you have? Like, yeah, how much do you get paid? If it's good pay, hey man. I mean, if you get to live in the castle to, to do that, you know, the royal but, palace. But if you me. mess up, man. You're out of the job. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> it's uh, too much. Yes, sir. I brush my teeth twice a day. I, I squeeze the toothpaste onto the toothbrush it precisely. Like, how weird would that interview be? Yeah, that'd be crazy, actually. It's like, <laughs> it's like New Jersey. It's like you can't, like, just pump your own gas. Like, you have somebody that literally picks up a, a thing of toothpaste and just... You know how little that takes to do? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's, but, hey... That's an interesting thing we all learned. In the <laughs> and uh, I definitely got some some things I can uh, teach y'all with some today I learned that I picked out earlier this week. Um, that for you, those of you who don't know, I do this segment called Today I Learned where I just go on Reddit and I pick out some of my favorite weird facts from that subreddit. And uh, without further ado, I'll go on to the very first one. Let's do it. So today I learned that Liam Neeson was training to be a teacher until... He punched a 15-year-old student in the face for pulling out a knife. Oh, so, okay. So, basically, he got fired because he punched the yeah, did student? He get in I don't know if he got fired. He said he left. Okay. Does he, I mean, he personally, he, he said that he literally, he was in uh, St. Mary's College, which is now closed. It was in Fenham, Newcastle. Yeah. Um, and he was training as a teacher before joining the Belfast Lyric Players Theater in 1976. Interesting. But he punched a, him in the face. There's a 15-year-old he... kid that pulled out a <laughs> knife on him. And he was like, so I just punched him in the face. And I was like, I had to roll out. What a missed opportunity by the movie company so far. How have we not had a movie about Liam Neeson being a teacher and having right? to, like, save everyone? Like he always does. Usually he's on planes. There are so <laughs> many Today I Learns about Liam Neeson and Keanu great Reeves. Guys. And I don't know why. Him too. But well, they're great people with interesting backstories. They, they are. They're very mysterious too. Uh, another one is Today I Learned that, you know, the game Grand Theft Auto V? Yes. Mm -hmm. The game, that game Grand Theft Auto V is being used to advance the AI of self-driving cars. No. Oh. <laughs> really? Um, and unfortunately, I don't have the I have to pay no for this matter, article, but I'm not going to no do it. No wonder we're like not getting anywhere with that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's this because um, because the cars self drive themselves in the game. Like driving is a really big part of right. Grand Theft Auto Five, and so I guess they use the technology, like the software in that game, to actually train their AI. Mm -hmm. in Interesting. Their I no Interesting. longer love the game. What? No. You love the game. I, I'm so against self-driving cars. It oh, scares me. Really? It scares me. I just don't think it's safe. People scare me. I mean, yeah. I'd be... That's true. I mean, oh, it's no. the it's the future of uh, us getting around. Yeah. If, if all cars are self-driving cars, then it's going to be better than if half. it's like half and half. But I definitely yeah. think... It I don't would know. Be better. I it's, love driving, though. It's. I just know that one day, like, you'll be, you'll be like... Driving the self-driving car, and it's gonna be like, I'm sorry, Dovi, I can't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going? We're going to North Korea, Dovi. <laughs> it's just something like that. Start flying over the water. <laughs> uh, let's do one more. Uh, here's a really quick one. Today I learned that tennis balls are yellow, so that you can see them better on color televisions. They used to be. Yeah. Uh, they used to be white. Wait, yeah. really? Are you mm -hmm. serious? But golf balls are white. Yeah, what's the point? Well, the grass is green, so I guess you have contrast. Okay, that's fair. But, but I mean, like, court, the tennis courts are the green. The courts are green? Yeah, but... It moves more quickly, I think, than a oh. golf ball. It's, like, more that's rapid true. and more right. number of times you hit it. With golf, you hit it once, and you just have to track it that one time. With tennis, it's going back and forth relatively true. quickly, so I'd like to think it's it'd be hard to, like, key out and find it if it was white. Right. Interesting. It, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope y'all listening enjoyed as well. Stick around, because we got real or fake news coming up. Next. Where the scissors at? Where's the tape? I don't know. You had it. 
Guys, what are you doing? You said sports rap. We're wrapping up presents for sports teams, right? No, I meant sports rap, the sports talk show on 90.5 WASU that airs every Tuesday and Thursday at 6, where we recap the biggest sports games and news from the week. What did you say? <laughs> well, what are you rapping? Oh, I'm just getting Tom Brady has to play football. Maybe you can get this. I'm just wrapping up LeBron's career in Cleveland and sending Isaiah Thomas a no-trade football. And I'm getting a choking hazard label for the Indians, Dodgers, and the Falcons. You think Dan Quinn will like this? Come on, guys, time for actual sports rap. Falcons, Dodgers. My name is Maggie Harper, and I host the App 1800, a podcast featuring the current events and boom that you care about. Listen every Monday at 9 a.m. on 90.5 WASU after the morning app. What time is it? I need to get up. I need to go for the show. Oh, it's time for the morning app. Oh. <laughs> Listen worldwide at WASURadio.com, live on App TV, or with the iHeartRadio app. Hey, Howie. Oh, hey, Kristen. How are you? So what's going on? What music do you listen to right now? Man, Howie, I don't know. I can't find any good music anymore. Well, guess what? I host a show on WASU. You do? Yeah, it's called The Rollout. Do you like Top 40 music? Of course I do. Well, guess what? I have your fix. I have the songs that are coming up on the charts. I have the next breakout artist and the song you want to hear again and again. That sounds great. When was it again? It's going to be Wednesdays at 7 on 90.5 WASU or WASURadio.com. The Rollout. Listen to The Rollout every Wednesday at 7 on 90.5 WASU. What's up, guys? Here on App TV, the A-Game is the only place where you can see highlights and updates on everything App State sports. I'm Braxton Critcher. And I'm Ashley Smith, co-host of the A-Game, where each and every Monday at 9 p.m., you can find the best coverage of all your favorite Mountaineer teams and in-depth reporting from the sidelines. That also includes athlete interviews, a player of the week, and a chance for students to get involved with the Q&A game. So join us each Monday on App TV for App State's only sports TV show.
Morning app on 90.5 WASU and WASURadio.com. What's going on? It is 8. 30 <laughs> you in the morning and it is friday and you know what we are so close to wrapping up this semester i'm so hyped because i'm starting to lose the steam the energy but i'm still just pushing through we're almost there hang in there howie how is the weather? Oh, yeah, Dove, you were right about us losing steam, but what we may be losing is the rain. Thank oh, the Lord. Please. It rained a little bit this morning, but uh, it's going to be cloudy for the rest of the day. It's going to be sunny for the next about four or five days, so expect sunshines, maybe a little clouds here and there. It is currently 46. It is a high of 62 today, a low a, a low of 43. That's um, not bad. Yeah, so tomorrow's going to be 64 as well, and it's going to be in the 70s starting Tuesday. Of next week oh, so yay. it's going to be 70s Good. warm and perfect mm-hmm. so for at least four days in a row it'll be above 72 degrees so nice it's going to be nice <laughs> like the boon summer comes to us now once yes. we're about to leave <laughs> we get like a little it. taste of it it's a little tease and it's then boon's tease. like lol watch this i'm just gonna <laughs> make you 40 <laughs> <laughs> lol it could happen but well you talk about it being the end of the semester and this is howie and i's last real or fake news oh, here on the man. morning app are you guys ready what's the score nobody has so ja oh man oh i'm in the lead yeah. with <laughs> yeah, you're just so used to being in the lead yeah i'm so used to reading you first i gave you a gift last uh, game josh is right behind me with 19 and then how he has 22 points so really it's technically still anybody's game yeah we're all within range here yeah but if i miss one <clears throat> it's basically a wrap for then me. it's over yeah, yeah. But unless <sighs> it's like i'm trying to do the math in my head so basically it's like if i miss one and Josh misses one, and we're fine. But I have to still, like, get three of them. So well, either way, we're still doing the last two Yeah, people, the last two So losers. I need to catch Dovey. Yeah. It's like the end Which of the semester when you're calculating hard. how badly you can fail the final and still pass yeah. the class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> literally me, literally me. <laughs> all right, how this works is I'm going to read four news headlines, and all I can tell you is the headline itself. I re- will read it one time unless Dovey, Dovey or Howie needs it reread. Uh, and you will determine if it is real or fake. You'll get a tally for every wrong answer. Are you guys ready for the first news headline? No. Let's do it. Always. All right. All right. Josh, don't look at me. I'm not. You are? No. You are? (laughs) What's behind you? Okay. Family of 13 boys welcomes 14. Oh, I read about this. This is real news. <laughs> well, thank you, Howie. Yes, um, I'm going to say it's real news. really should have held this in. Uh, yeah, you should have kept no, that little yeah, nugget. Yeah, maybe. Yes. Wow. I, I think it might that. be real. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting yeah. a feeling it's real. I might just... Yeah, Do I, I get a bonus points if I tell no. you where no. the family's from? No, that's, that's your loss. You shouldn't have said it. <laughs> no. You should have waited till we all said something. You should oh, say no. fake. All right. Well, no surprise. It's real. <laughs> They're nice. from Michigan. The Michigan family, yeah. Headlines. They have 13 boys, Thanks, and they are about to welcome their 14th. That's crazy. 14 boys. Oh, yeah. man. I where messed up so this? bad. Where did you read this? I, I heard it somewhere during the week. Okay, so, so the couple was told that the odds of having 12 boys in a row was a 0.02%, and now they are having 14. Mm. 14 boys. Oh, that poor mother. That's the percentage my uh, teacher gave me of, you know, passing the class, so all things are possible. <laughs> <laughs> I just messed up really oh, bad. <laughs> that's okay. Time to redeem yourself, Howie. All right, second news headline. New fad has Chinese women wearing fake nails made of meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, fake nails made of meat. meat. I mean, unless Kristen's creativity has gotten better, which it might have. I'm gonna say it's fake, dude. I'm making no facial expressions because, whatsoever. I mean, you are. Dude's there, happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm gonna go with Dovey on this one and say it's fake news. Huh? So I can catch up right here. You could. Or you will be. Oh, you to said me. fake. I said it's fake. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'll go real. I'm. I'll, I'll go real. You go real. Yeah. You took the. Bait. We'll see what happens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. <laughs> Josh is wrong. This is fake. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even hide my excitement anymore. The second that Josh submits his answer, it just shows on my face. Yeah. I'm like now I'm holding it in the whole time. Now, now here's the <sighs> thing though. Josh has to get the next two correct, and Dovi has to mix and miss the next two for them to tie. Ooh. So, I don't know. Oh, so no matter what, I'm kind of in, in, in the clear. 
So I guess if you die, yeah. then I'll just be the one that gets in trouble, really. That does or all no. three of us. Or, yeah. Or... Oh, the egg... oh, yeah. The egg <laughs> roulette thing. I'm going to be roulette. purposely going opposite of Dovey. Like... Yeah. Ah. No, no, no. Don't think too much. Just focus on the headline. The spice of life. On how you're saying it? Okay. <laughs> no, don't look at me. Don't oh. look at my inflection. <laughs> Polygamist takes his 30-second bride. I'm sorry, what what? Polygamous? Oh, did you miss it? Oh, so can't I'll really say read polygamous, polygamous takes his 30 second is it like bride. a polygon? It's like... A polygamist is somebody that believes in multiple marriages, as opposed oh. to monogamy, which is one marriage. And right. takes his third bride, that we said? 20... Oh, 30 second. I can't bride. say it again. 30 second. Have you never seen those TLC shows? Um, where it's like sister wives and stuff. I, they're actually there's a ton of them on yeah. TLC right now. Like not TLC's just TLC's the weirdest channel. But it is. How good looking is this man that he has 32 brides? Just huh? I'm gonna say it's real news. I'll go fake. Yeah, I'm gonna go fake. Oh, Dovey, oh no. get out! Get out! Oh no, because Dovey's in the clear. If they go the same one, <laughs> Howie, you're incorrect. What? This is fake news. Oh, man. I'm oh, sorry. Wrong. <laughs> Dovey wrong. is in the clear. <laughs> oh. Nice work, Dovey. I'm so well, sorry. it's been over for me, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, I'm out too, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Last news headline forever. Well, for us. Vintage, vintage toast rack could be worth thousands. Toast rack? What's a toast rack? You don't own a toast rack? Who I doesn't own a toast rack? You didn't know what polygamy this. was. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm unfamiliar <laughs> with <God. laughs> different methods of toasting. Uh, have so. you ever seen? Okay, so it's like a toaster oven. Okay. As opposed to a physical toaster. Okay. Oh. Oh. This, this okay, so, so it's all the, the rack in the toaster. Put, yeah. Oh. Got it. Got it. So wait, what was it again? <laughs> to- oh, antique toaster rack. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I'll, I like I'll how we say again. antique toaster rack could be rare. It's like, well, yeah, it's antique. Like, <laughs> Vintage toast, toast rack could be worth thousands. Could be worth thousands. I'm going to say real news. See, that one would be real because any toast, ra- <laughs> any vintage toast rack that you find could be worth thousands. Well, that's Doesn't fair. mean it is. <laughs> it so either way, this should be real. But, Dovey, what do you think? And I at least want to get within one of you. So I'm going to say it's true. I'm going to say it's true. real. Real news. I'll, I'll go fake. I mean, I'm already, yeah. Already okay. Lost. This is real. This okay. is real. A couple has learned that their toast rack bought 80 years ago could now be worth thousands at an auction, somewhere between $5,000 and $16,000, because wow. apparently there are designer toasters out there. And this is from one. I want my toaster designer only. <laughs> <laughs> How you were so close, dude. You had three out of four, though. Oh, man. Mm. Did you say true or false to that I one? said false, so I got it wrong. So, okay. So I missed, like, well, three Dovey, out of four, yeah. I think Dovey is our winner. I think I won. Real fake news this semester. Wow. It looks like it. He won. W. Nice. He's got his music. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 nice. Nice job, Dovey. All right, so it looks Sweet. like Josh and Howie will be playing egg roulette sometime oh, soon no, and we will right. post that if you don't like us already on facebook go ahead and like the morning app and 90.5 wasu and you will see uh poor joshua and uh howie play egg roulette soon but remember oh, i didn't lose i got second yeah this is true remember yeah. how we lost i lost there i should have lost last time like but... howie and dovey <laughs> lost last time so let's remember I haven't officially lost. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well. Well, on the other side of the break, a subject that a lot of us have lost before, relationship talk, of course, here on the morning app. Where the scissors at? Where's the tape? I don't know. You had it. No, I didn't. Guys, what are you doing? You said sports rap. We're wrapping up presents for sports teams, right? No, I meant sports rap, the sports talk show on 90.5 WASU that airs every Tuesday and Thursday at 6, where we recap the biggest sports games and news from the week. What did you say? <laughs> well, what are you rapping? Oh, I'm just getting Tom Brady to play football. And you can catch this. I'm just wrapping up LeBron's career in Cleveland and sending Isaiah Thomas a no trade call. And I'm getting a choking hazard label for the Indians, Dodgers, and the Falcons. You think Dan Quinn will like this? Come on, guys, time for actual sports draft. Falcons, Dodgers.
My name is Maggie Harper, and I host the App 1800, a podcast featuring the current events in Boone that you care about. Listen every Monday at 9 a.m. on 90.5 WASU after the morning app. What time is it? I need to get up. I'm gonna go fish. Oh, it's time for the morning out. Oh. Into the morning app on 90.5 WASU. Hi guys, doing this morning. You can listen worldwide at WASURadio.com, live on App TV, or with the iHeartRadio app. Hey Howie. Oh, hey Kristen, how are you? So what's going on? What music you listen to right now? <sighs> Man, Howie, I don't know. I can't find any good music anymore. Well, guess what? I host a show on WASU. You do? Yeah, it's called a rollout. Do you like top 40 music? Of course I do. Well, guess what? I have your fix. I have the songs that are be coming up on the charts. I have the next breakout artist and the song you want to hear again and again. That sounds great. When was it again? It's going to be Wednesdays at 7 on 90.5 WASU or WASURadio.com. The rollout. Listen to the rollout every Wednesday at 7 on 90.5 WASU. What's up, guys? Here on App TV, the A Game is the only place where you can see highlights and updates on everything App State sports. I'm Braxton Critcher. And I'm Ashley Smith, co host of the A Game, where each and every Monday at 9 p.m., you can find the best coverage of all your favorite Mountaineer teams and in depth reporting from the sidelines. That also includes athlete interviews, a player of the week, and a chance for students to get involved with the QA game. So join us each Monday on App TV for App State's only sports TV show. And now back to the morning app on 90.5 WASU. 8.46 on this lovely, gorgeous Friday morning. You have approximately 14 minutes to get to your 9 a.m. if you are, you know, slacking this morning. But I don't blame you. We're here to help, especially if you are having relationship problems right now. Oh, yes. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. I'll take me. it. Don't, don't hurt, hurt me. me. No more. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the country anthem. <laughs> the remix on the track. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I've got uh, a question to ask y'all <laughs> just to see out of your curiosity what you guys think. Uh -huh. um, so my question is, yes. when is it the right time to move in with your boo? And what are, like, some of the pros and cons in your opinion about Never. that? Because um, to me, I think 
that's a pretty big step for a relationship. I think you definitely have to be like in a long term mindset for that. Because I mean, when you do that, you're kind of you're gonna be spending more time with each other. You're gonna see each other's little habits, and kind of see how you are day to day. And you have to learn how to adapt to that. So yeah, what do you think? To be fair, if you're in college dating and then you both graduate at the same time, I feel like for unless you've been like dating for you know less than six months or something, I feel like most couples would try and go to the same area together, get a job, and then live together. Mm. Like whether or not it's the right time or not, if you're mm -hmm. dating in college and then you graduate, most likely you guys are trying to go to the same place and you know live in the same mm -hmm. place. That seems like, to be you know. the move. Yeah, it, it is hard though, especially for people in our industry because you have to be flexible with location. You have to be willing to move. So you know. Uh, Maybe if you are in a, an industry where you can be picky with location, yeah. um, you know, I, I've seen couples do that. But, uh, I mean, we know we have a friend that was in Charlotte and then was in Texas all within a year. Yeah. So, hmm. you know, it, it's a really difficult thing to be like, yeah, we're going to be in this location. We'll sign a lease for this long and it'll be stable because right now in your 20s, it's, it's not. It's not stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially early 20s. That's a good point. In our, in our department, yeah, we are constantly traveling and yeah. moving and doing stuff. So. Um, I think if you're not in the calm area, if you're just like <laughs> business or whatever you do, person. if you're a normal person, not like yes, us. you're not crazy. <laughs> um, I, I would say probably about if you dated for a year at least. I don't think if you should do it before then, but you know me, I haven't you know yeah, been I with mean, somebody that long, but still. But I know a couple too, and and you guys know them as well that moved in together after three months of dating, and they're right. doing just fine. Right. Like they're mm -hmm. thriving. So right. it, it's really hard to tell. I think it is dependent upon what stage you guys are in the relationship. You know, time stamp. That's irrelevant in most relationships. Do you think it's smart to move, like, try to move in uh, if you've been dating for that long or you feel like you're ready? Do you think it's smart to do that while you're in college before you actually do go out into a new city or something like that? Because I feel like the stress of, you know, being in that environment and stuff mm -hmm. like that could play a role if it's your first time moving in together. Yeah, I, I feel, honestly, I don't see a problem with couples living together in college. You know, I think college is the time to have roommates, you know, mm -hmm. and so why not have a roommate that you love and the roommate that you get along with? So mm -hmm. I don't see a problem if you're still in, you know, in university and you want to live with your significant other. Cause well, the only problem there is, though, if you're rooming with someone and then it doesn't work out, you've signed a lease for that amount of time and you still... You can sublease. You can always get out. Yeah. You really can. Cause <laughs> it's like, just a hassle. It is a hassle, but breaking up is a hassle if you've been dating well, yeah. for so long, you know? <laughs> I don't so... want to break up because it's too much hassle. <laughs> well, yeah, but... You know, there, there's an out. My thought process, though, too, is like, because I've heard this done both ways. Do you both sign the lease or do you put it in one person's name and then the other person is the one that moves out if you do break up? It's like a prenup, almost, yeah. you know? It's like, how do you yeah. handle that situation? Because you, you don't want to be like, oh, well, we are going to break up, but you also don't want to be illogical and not think about that possibility happening, you know? Right. So how do you work out that? Because some leases, you need all the roommates on it. That's interesting. Some actually. leases yeah. you don't. Yeah. See, dang, you made a good point. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> rethink, rethink my life. Yeah, I gotta rethink this because at first, whenever you're, you were talking about it, I was like, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea if you're dating in college. But at the same time, you you do have you know ways to get out. Uh, if like if you are dating and something happens and you just break up or something crazy happens and you need to get out of your lease, there are ways to get out of it. So I think that I wouldn't, I would say I wouldn't do it, but it'd be a conversation I would have to have. You know, not just one, but mm -hmm. multiple conversations yeah. about living together. It's a process. It's a process. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely something you don't want to just take lightheartedly. You yeah. know, definitely think about it, especially if, you know, you don't want to, I don't know, if you're not used to spending that much time together, you also might want to reconsider it to yeah. look at your relationship and how much time is actually allotted with your roommate versus your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever it is and compare those two and be like, you know, if we aren't spending a ton of time together, I don't know, is this, a, is this the next step or is there a medium step we can take between these two mm. next moves that will make it easier? Yeah, yeah. That's my thought process. Mm. Interesting. Take your time, go with the flow. <laughs> more, more of the story. Well, on the other, like, you know, sadder side of that, breakups. They happen, and, you know, we are here to help you get closure through those. Mm, so such I a have... hassle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I have tips right now, though, to help you get closure after a bad breakup. Number one is give their stuff back immediately. Don't hang on to it, even if you like it. Give it away, because you know, even if it's like... Mm. <sighs> Something that's super valuable and you want to keep it because it's worth a lot of money or something, you know, 
or you really like it, give it back because you will forever associate their name with that item. Or yeah. put it on App State Classified. Yeah, sell it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like just, or give it back. <laughs> make the person that gave it to you buy it back off the App State Classified. Yeah, you oh, want yeah. it, you got to yeah. pay for it. How much is it like you put my love? <laughs> 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 love that one. <laughs> for the price. Another one is you're going to want to get new bed sheets and a new comforter and all of that because, you know, their scent lingers. It does. And that'll just help you get over their breakup a lot. You can wash them. Uh, or just buy new ones. You just burn them. No, you just, yeah, just burn them. <laughs> you don't have the money yeah. to buy new stuff. That's what I'm saying, man. I like my sheets. So. Oh, Put on my Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Just like throw the lighter on top of all go on. the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Another one, and I actually have been doing this recently, not when, not because I'm, I'm broken up in my relationship, but with people that I have stopped talking to that are, you know, just toxic to me. Uh, cleanse your social media page. Mm-hmm. This one's, I don't know, some people are like, I don't want to unfollow them. But I think that when I went through a breakup, <laughs> that helped me a lot because I, 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 what I did actually is I had my friend still follow that person. So if I wanted to see, I could be like, hey, can I just look real yeah, quick, see that, what he's up to? But yeah. it's not intoxicating my feed and my social media time. Word. Yeah, That's a classic thing that a lot of people do. Like, hey, so I yeah. know you're still following him. Can I like stalk him real quick, see what's yeah. going on there, yeah. see what's going on in his mm-hmm. life? And be like, oh, he has a new girl. <laughs> yeah, so you still have that option, which is, is it's helpful because sometimes you do just want to know what they're up to. But if you unfollow them, it's going to just bring a lot of, you know, less distractions into your life and then later mm. down the road if you guys do decide to be friends or you're like oh i'm fully over him i want to i just want to keep updated on his life because you know we did date at one point then you can go back and follow them and it shouldn't be awkward it shouldn't be weird. yeah that, that's actually a good example instead of me unfollowing my ex-girlfriend i actually muted her on twitter there you go so yeah like, i still followed her but i completely forgot about her twitter and like just like a month ago or two because like i see some of her tweets that she retweets and so i was like oh i've had her muted for this long and it's been you know three years three or four years and i'm fully over it yeah Yeah. like i'm so far over it but i was okay well i'll just unmute her now Mm because we'll see what her tweets are like she tweets a lot by the way so (laughs) that was another reason why i had to mute her (laughs) but on monday it's going to be a very very sad day it's going to be kristen and i's last show as well as molly's it's It's going to be a big struggle. I'm not ready for it, but we'll be back on Monday on the morning app. Hope you have a fantastic Friday and a fantastic weekend.